Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to this Sunday reflection, and I trust that God is working with you, and he continues to bless you and to inspire you and to transform your lives. We are living in such difficult times, and we know that Jesus Christ is at work, the Lord God is on the throne, and he continues to work in our lives. So welcome, those of you who listen to us in the Caribbean, in the um, diaspora of the North American regions and Europe. We want to celebrate those of you in the wider Jamaican context who continue to listen to us. And may God grant you grace. Welcome. Today is Palm Sunday. And we, we always celebrate the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem as a symbol of his kingship, as a symbol of his messianic um, um, work that he came to do, and also um, as a symbol of his ability to save and to transform us a representation of the Godhead as he comes and enters our lives. And so today, before we get into the actual reflection, as usual, we, um, we will sing a song or play a song and then we will pray with those who are challenged and tested. So welcome Baritone, Lilliput, Mount Zion and those in the Farmites congregation. May God bless you as we share. Enter into Jerusalem, St. Andrew Parish um, Choir. Today, let us grab our palm leaves and let us celebrate the king. The palm leaf is a symbol of victory. As the children of Israel came out of Egypt, um, out of Egypt, and they reached to heal him, they were, there were 70 palm trees, a symbol of their triumph over the land of Egypt and the victory that they now receive. So let us wave them as a sign that God has liberated you and free you from everything that is oppressive. Let us pray. Father, we just come before your presence today. We, 
we, we come representing those who are hurting, those who are tested and tried, those who are in difficult situation. So we pray at this time for Sister uh, Shavana, who is in the hospital. We pray for her constant healing, pray for her extended family, and that God, you will speak to them, grant them grace and peace and love. We pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for, O oh God Almighty, for Sister Christine. We pray that you will touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. We speak release in her life. We pray for the Morrises, for their healing. We pray, continue to pray for Sister Keisha and family, that God, you will grant them grace in this hour and strength and give them the peace which passes all human understanding. And for all our brothers and sisters who are tested and challenged in one way or another in our congregations, in the context in which we practice ministry, we pray, God Almighty, that you will liberate them. We pray for this nation of ours, that you will remove corruption, you will remove the powers that work and operate over us, over our families. We bind principalities and powers, the spirit of death. We bind those forces of darkness that would want to impede O oh God, your work and ministry overshadow us, Lord. Bring protection and bring healing in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, God Almighty, for government or leaders, those, O oh God, who are in authority or security forces or banking sector. We pray, O oh God Almighty, that you will intervene. The lives of our young people and children, we cover them. In the name of Jesus, we speak into the atmosphere over our region, over every region, O oh God, globally, because we recognize that the devil from hell is at work, Lord God Almighty, to bring people under suppression and to bring them down and to get them to the place where they, they reject the name of Jesus. We pray for Israel, O oh God Almighty, that you will lead them in the right path that they will not, O oh God Almighty, do the things, O oh God Almighty, that they should not do against the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray, God, that you will grant them grace and peace in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your word to our hearts today. In Christ's name we pray. Hallelujah. of Judah, the seed of Abraham. Hallelujah. Today Jesus comes as our King. He comes riding in our lives to give us peace and to release us today. Hallelujah. At this time, brothers and sisters, I want to share with us a word from the, the book of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 8 to verse 10. That is Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 8 to verse 10. And it has to do with the prophecy regarding the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ. And let us read. You can read along with me. 
it says, and I will encamp about mine house because of the army and because of him that, re that returneth. And no oppressor shall pass through them anymore. For now have I seen with mine eyes. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of, of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt the fowl of an ass. Verse 10, And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen, and his dominion shall be from sea, even to sea, and from the river, even to the end of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Father, we ask you to open our eyes, allow us to see deeper truths within your word, and may you break the bows that are oppressive to us, in Jesus' name we pray. Today, brothers and sisters, we are talking about he who comes riding based on the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ. Now, in the accounts of the four canonical Gospels, Jesus Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem took place in the days before the Last Supper making Christ week of passion, marking, I should say, Christ's week of passion, to be followed by his suffering, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And this would take place in the Holy Week. On this occasion, the crowds gathered around Jesus, believing him to be their promised Messiah and King the crowd having also gathered there for the celebration of the feast of the Passover. The crowd laid their clothes on the ground, picked palm leaves, waved them, and shout, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna meaning, Lord, save us now. Save us now, O Lord, we pray. In John's account of the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ, John is saying in St. John, in John 12, verse 12 to 13, on, on the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, verse 13, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him. And cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that comes in the name of the Lord. In the Jewish messianic concept, he who comes in the name of the Lord was to be a savior and liberator of the Jewish community from the hands of their evil oppressors and was to be the future redeemer of the Jewish community and by extension, the entire world, because God promised to bless the world through Abraham. Now, in the concept of such messianism, he who comes in the name of the Lord was to be the Messiah King. And in the traditional understanding, he was to be anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit and was to represent the entire Godhead, since he comes in the name of the Lord. When he comes, he would destroy the yokes and set the captives free, for in him is God, and in him God is present, the full embodiment of the Godhead, and where God and his presence is, there is liberty. And there is freedom. On the day of he on the day he came riding on a donkey and he fit the bill. Yes, 
as prophesied in our text in Zechariah 9 and verse 9. Hear the text. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, the king comes unto you. He is just, having salvation, lowly, and riding upon an ass, and upon the colt, the foal of an ass. This prophecy was now finding active, actual fulfillment in Jesus Christ when he came riding on the ass. And so the people shouted, Hosanna in the highest, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. When they saw the fulfillment of the prophecy before their very eyes, they were confident that this was their day of liberation and breakthrough for God has entered their struggles and their experiences and so it was time for them to rejoice rejoice for for he who was to liberate them has come I would say to you today that it is your time also to rejoice because he who is to liberate you is present and represented by this Palm Sunday, he comes riding into your life, into your experience to bring the deliverance that you seek in his name. In the counterpart um, of the Messianic Psalm, the Psalm is caught the vision and said in Psalm 118, verse 24 to 27, this is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Verse 25. Save now, I beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech you, send now prosperity. And verse 24, um, 26. Blessed be he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. And verse 27. God is the Lord who has shown light bind the sacrifice with cords even unto the horns of the altar. Today, brothers and sisters, Jesus comes riding. Today, this is the day that the Lord has made. In other words, this is the day which the Lord has appointed for you, for the Lord to liberate you and to break you free from everything which binds you and oppresses you so that he can lift you out of your afflictions and saves you now and give you the prosperity and the blessings that you long sought. No more oppression. So rejoice. Shout Hosanna. Blessed he is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In other words, it's a prayer. Lord, save us now. A prayer for God through Jesus Christ to save us now from whatever oppressive situation that we find ourselves in, from whatever affliction which surround us. He who comes in the, in the name of the Lord, he who comes riding into Jerusalem, he who comes riding into your life, he is God's representative and he is your king according to Psalm 72 and verse 11 to verse 14. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him, and all nations shall serve him. For he shall deliver the needy when they cry, the poor also, and they that have no helper. Verse 13. He shall spare the poor and the needy, and shall save the souls of the needy. In verse 14. He shall redeem their souls from deceit and violence, and, and precious shall their blood be in his sight. Christ, as our King, rules over a righteous kingdom of which we are part, and in the scope of his reign there is righteousness, there is peace, and there is joy in the Holy Ghost. There is healing and life which is abundant. So he who comes riding, he comes riding as our king. And in the scope of his domain, he gives us peace and he gives us freedom and he gives us liberation. 
verse, the second point I would like to make is that he who comes riding, he is just and he comes bringing salvation, meaning he comes to set us free, to liberate us, freeing us from the guilt and the penalty of sin, freeing us from the power of sin and freeing us from the, ultimately, from the very presence of sin. All oppression shall cease. Hear Isaiah 12, verse 2 to 3. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has become um, this, my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall we draw water out of the wells of salvation. He comes and he brings salvation. The song rightly puts it, he says, I have heard the joyful song. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Spread the news all around. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. He comes and he comes and he brings salvation. He who comes riding comes to defeat our enemies that oppress uh, oppresses us and to give peace to those who are broken and to those who are trodden down and to those who are afflicted at the hands of the enemy. Verse 10, And I will cut off the chariots from Ephraim and the horses from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace to the heathen and his dominion shall be from sea to sea and from river to river and to the end of the earth. Today, Christ comes riding into your Jerusalem. He comes riding into your life. He comes riding as your king. He comes with salvation. He comes to defeat the enemy. He comes to break the bows and to cut the arrows. He comes to release you from everything that is defeating and everything that is oppressive. Oh, behold, your king comes, and he comes riding. Will your crowd cry, shout, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We speak release over those of you that are oppressed. Release over those of you that are bound because the full embodiment of Christ comes riding in your life. The full embodiment of God and the Godhead comes riding into your life. And as a consequence, your yokes are broken and your shackles are loose. Yes, you are loose from every disease, from every sickness, from everything that is oppressive from everything that binds you and hold you and chain you, for in the name of Jesus, there is freedom and there is liberty. In the name of Jesus, you are set free from the things that are oppressive and we bind them for you in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Nothing lacking. Nothing wanting and nothing broken in your life. Until next week, God bless you. Shalom. My days are filled with laughter. My heart has known your peace. I've traveled far still.